Welcome to GoldenAgeRadio.com, rumble.com slash C slash G-A-R. Brand new episodes every week. Visit VeteransRadioMinistry.com to listen to more episodes. Don't you know anything? You can crawl through here and no one will spot you. It's like a whole forest in miniature. Silly. You can't have a forest in miniature. Well, can you? Follow me. Oh, can't you smell it? It's beautiful. Georgie... It's awfully dark and quiet. Yes. <laughs> I'm scared, George. Can I put my arms around you? Well, yes, but... Well, don't you like it when I put my arms around you? I do, but... And don't you like it when I kiss you like this? I... And like this? And like this? Yes. And like this? Yes, in fact. <laughs> Here. And now you catch me. <laughs> Well, George, you certainly seem to have made an impression on Lady Beatrice. And young Master Garvel. Seems they've asked for you to play with them next Sunday, too. Sunday, Mother? Well, on Sundays, don't we always go to... We do. But next Sunday, Lady Drew pays her annual visit to the Vicarage of Rope, Dean. Don't you remember last summer? The people of the village, they're always so grateful. So I'm asking you to be very, very good while I'm away. Do you promise, George? A tribe of Indians? Right. I'm the Spanish nobleman. <laughs> I'm the Spanish nobleman's wife. And you? Well, like we said, you're this whole tribe of Indians. <laughs> Spanish Indians. But we can't have that. Why not? Yes. Why not? We've built you a wigwam, haven't we? You can stay in it as long as you like. We run away and will you come and find us? Eventually. And your prize, your booty, is to carry her off. Carry off B. Well, if you're lucky. If you find me. But this won't do at all. Why not? Well, for a start, he can't be a nobleman. I don't see why not. And you his wife? What are you saying? Well, it's not on, is it? It's as simple as that. It would be... It would be impertinent. He can't even read Latin. And he drops his H's like anything. Well, what does that matter? Yes, you heard. What does it matter? There you are. Erd, erd, erd. Well, if that's how you feel, here's my hand and you can have it on your head. <clears throat> Why, you don't you. call me names, you stuck-up bugger. Go on, George. Well, that's right, Archie. Hey. Oh. Go on, George. Hey, you don't learn a fight like that. Who says a scrub is a scrub, ain't it? It's not the Queen's rules. Go hang the Queen's rules. Take that. Oh, hey, not so fast. Go on, Archie. Give it to him, George. Well, had enough, have you? Gosh, there's someone coming. Say it. George. Say I've had enough. Archie. Have, have, have. Um, Georgie! Um, um. Oh! Hello, Mummy. Miss Somerville? Fighting? Surely there's not been fighting. Archibald? Beatrice? It's all his fault, Mummy. Heavens above! It's the Ponderivo boy, isn't it? It is. How dare you, young man? You cheat me, so I clouted in the soul. How dare you? He broke the rules. What rules? He didn't fight fair. Archie. We were just waiting. Waiting here in the Warren to... Uh, to welcome you home, won't we be? Then he came up. Just came up and started hitting me. And then... And then... Beatrice? Can this be true? You at least should know better. Well, Beatrice, have you nothing to say? Nothing at all? No, Mummy. It was as Archie said. George, have you no conception of what a wicked, ungrateful boy you've turned out to be? It wasn't true what he said was a fair fight. The disgrace of it. Did you never think of me, your mother? Fortunately, in that respect, Lady Drew has been, as ever, generosity and goodness itself. As for yourself, if you were prepared to admit you behaved badly, if you were prepared to go up to young Master Garvel and beg his I pardon... I won't beg his pardon, no, Al. 
Vic, you leave me no choice. You must go off to your Uncle Frapp at Chatham. He might not be much to look at, but he's a good, hard-working man, a baker. I don't care where I have to go. or what I have to do, I won't beg your pardon from that Archie. Then so be it. Oh, George, continue like this and what will become of you? We will now kneel in prayer. O oh Lord, we kneel before you as on your miserable knees, George. sinners. And come, come to beg you forgiveness heard. for on our sins knees. and transgressions. Come to seek in the arms of you, our Lord, refuge from the devil and his manifold works. George, you'll be sharing your bed with your cousins Jeremiah and Joshua. Right, Jeremiah? Right, Father. Right, Joshua? Right, Father. And we rise at five. Five o'clock? Anyone tells you there's no point at rising at dawn, and I'll tell them they're falalas. That's what they are. We bakers, we're happy to make the bread we break in the name of the Lord. Aren't we, wifey? We are, for all our problems. Let your Aunt Betsy be an example to you, young George. The suffering this woman has known... One day you'll see it, young George. God has sent us many children, has he not, Nicodemus? He has. And most of them he's taken back. That too? Yes. God in his wisdom has made us, your uncle and me, suffer twice over. The having and the losing, the coming and the going. We was born to suffer, wifey. But it's God's will. That we was, and that it is. So, my lad, off to bed with you, and don't forget to say your prayers. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy... You're keeping quiet, cousin. Won't you join us in our prayer? Well, I... Hell and eternal punishment wait you else. Our God is a vengeful God, says Father. He does. Well, cousin, we're waiting. I think... I think I'll just listen. God, our Father. Hold up. George, you don't say your prayers and it's the eternal bonfire for you it is. Eternal punishment. Hell. Says who? What was that? What did you say? Who said there was hell and eternal punishment? No God worth his sort would be such a fool as that. You mean... You're not to listen to this, Joshua. Cover your ears. You mean... You're saying... Is no God? Because remember, if there's no God, why, you might do just as you like. Well, if you're swine enough, I suppose. That what you're saying? If you like. I've never heard such a thing. Brother, we must go down on our knees and pray for the soul of this sinner, this blasphemer. Brother! Oh, I'm still covering my ears, brother. Then uncover them. Down on our knees, I say. Forgive him, O oh Lord, for he knows not what he says. He is nothing. He is a Listen, witch. pray as much as you like, but if it's all an excuse just to cheat me, there I draw the line. Oh, infidel. Is this possible? George! That's the way it were, Father. He hit me for telling you about his blasphemies. And I turned the other cheek. Oh, he's got the evil one riding on his back now. And no mistake. Come here, George. Ah! Lick on my ear, please. Ah! See that? Hey? Hey? What's that? Tent of Barma Gilead, I'm thinking. Tent of gourds that give shade and water in a thirsty land. No. What is it? It's the bakehouse fire. It's the fire's a damnation. That's what it is. Hellfire. Tell me this. Lick on my ear. Suppose you was took sudden in your sleep, eh? Where'd you be then? 
That's where you be, in there amid all them flames. You want to wake up in there, young George, burning and screaming forever? That's where you'll be if you don't repent your wicked, wicked ways. And there's only one way to repent. Repeat after me. Joshua, Jeremiah, you too. Forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us our foolish ways. Forgive us our... Tra I don't hear you, George. Think on my ear. This God of yours. Yours, mine, all our God. Well, if he does exist, well, I'm sure you don't square him like that. If God's that kind of coward, damn me here. Damn me here and now. Nicodemus. Just you wait till our chapel hears this. Oh, Lord, come among us is a sinner of tender age. Come among us is a blasphemer, O oh Lord, in the shape of a mere boy. Help us, O oh Lord, to go down on our knees. On your knees, George, this instant. So we may wrestle for the soul of this sinner in our midst. So we may wrest him from the sweaty hands of the devil. No! George! Oh, oh stop him, Nicodemus! Stop him, from stop him someone! Stop that boy! Excuse me. Yes? What do you want? Is this the way to Bladesover? Bladesover, you say? Oh, that it is. Uh, but you've a ways to go yet, young fella. Where you come from, then? Chatham. Chatham? Yeah. You done all that way this morning? Well, you must be keen. Would it be family you're visiting? I say, young fella! Yes? Hello, oh, Mr. Rabbit. George! What on earth are you doing here? I want the truth, George. Have you... run away? I have. And have you no explanation? I won't go back, Mother. I'll drown myself first. Well, don't speak like that. I forbid you to speak like that. Well, you can't stay here. That much is clear. Mother? Lady Drew considers you... I'm ashamed to say this, George, but then who can blame her? She considers you a bad influence on the other children. No, she has put her foot down. Then? The suffering you have brought me. I don't know what to do. I... There's only one last thing I can do. Mother? You should bring us both to this. Let me see. I understand your uncle's shop is in walking distance, George. This way. I have not seen your uncle, your uh, other uncle, since he was, well, almost a boy. In those days, according to your... According to your father, he was supposed to be clever. About three years ago, I heard as he'd married and set himself up in business here in Wimblehurst. So I suppose she had some money. Ah, oh, 
I do believe this is it. Uh, yes, madam. Uh, I think you're the person we're looking for. Is that right? Well, I sincerely hope so. If you'd just care to step this way, madam, and you, young sir. Oh. Hmm? Huh? Yeah. <coughs> and now... <laughs> I don't know where to begin. <laughs> Do we ever? Perhaps you was admiring my shop front. Tain't no ordinary common or garden Wimblehurst shop front. Oh, no, as I hope you'll agree, ma'am, but then... <laughs> I likes to think as I'm no ordinary common or garden Wimblehurst kind of chemist, neither. Now, um, uh, pharmaceuticals, perhaps? A uh, touch of the headaches, hot flushes... <laughs> oh, not perhaps disorders of a <clears throat> no womanly kind. No, well, excuse me for even asking. Then, um, well, your husband, perhaps? Uh, I stock an extensive range of the uh, um, apparatuses for the master of the household, the trusses, and... Please! Uh, mm? The boy. Oh, of course not. I'm begging your pardon, ma'am. I'm begging your pardon, young sir. Um, I know. I know you was taken by my little shop front display for Ponderivo's extraordinary cough link to stock it up now. It's tuppence cheaper than in winter when you'll need it. Hmm? <laughs> That's it. That's it. Why well, didn't I guess? I'll just pop through to the supply room. And... Do you really hmm? not recognise me at all, Edward? Huh? Teddy? Oh, my oriental gums! Oh, 11,000 virgins! It's, it's why... It's George's missus! Uh, uh, but then this must be... Quite. Little George. <laughs> oh, Susan! Susan, come down here, my angel! I tell you what, even better. Come through. Come through to the parlour and meet the lovely Susan for yourself. And you, young George, an especial delight to meet you. Uh, that's right, that's right. Oh, never mind the boxes and the mess. Oh, yes, ignore that old contraption. One of my little schemes, but uh, some other time. Susan, you there? What's she up to hmm? now? What's the old excitement then? <laughs> Susan, it's sister-in-law, Ponderivo. Teddy? The George's wife. And she's brought little George, hasn't she, young fella? What, Susan told you about them a hundred times. Why? Why, delighted, I'm sure. <laughs> You're very welcome. Mm. <laughs> Though, I confess, it's, uh, well, it's a surprise. Mm -hmm. Crikey, it's not as if we've got anything to offer you, have we, Teddy? Oh. <gasps> We're all out. Unless, of course, him old there can mm. cook something from his old chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Which, believe you me, is perfectly equal to doing. Oh, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> very pleased to meet you, I'm sure. George? Kiss your aunt. <laughs> George! Oh, now that's all right, George. Don't you be all worrying about that. If you don't like to kiss me, well, I can't say I like kissing strangers either. Aunt or no aunt. Now, just you all sit down where you's all comfortable. Ooh, yes, now let's sit down. And... Edward, mm -hmm. um, Teddy, mm -hmm. this isn't merely a social call. No? It's about the boy. Oh, what you about then, eh, George? <laughs> uh, um, there's things I need to discuss. Oh, oh uh, Teddy. Well, oh, discuss away, right, Susan? So, um, perhaps if George here could... I'm sorry. Teddy. Oh, <laughs> right you are. Mm, George, why don't you come along with me and Mo? I've got a secret I want to share with you as pertaining to that sleepy old Wimblehurst out there. <laughs> Now, tell me what you see. Uncle? Huh? Well, there's this street, and <laughs> there's a churchyard opposite, and near that old dog asleep in the road. Oh, what you credited, eh? How short of midday are we now? And here's Wimblehurst dead! Well, ain't it sleepy? There's no jump about the place, George. No life. And, yes, as you say, look at Ruck the Butcher's old dog lying there, slap in the middle of the road, its paws on its ears, and then flies buzzing about it. Why? If the last trump sounded, I don't believe that dog would wake. Do you? Hmm? Well, nobody hereabouts would wake. Well, them chaps over there in the church, shall they just turn over and say, no, nah, tell us another one. You don't catch us like that. <sighs> Here he comes. The man himself, today and every day, 12 o'clock and 7 o'clock, down the Eastry Arms, chin wagon in the billiard room with Mar Bell the grocer and Snape the barber. <laughs> Good day, Ruck. Hello there, Ponderivo. <laughs> uh, 
I see there's a fresh card up in the window. So it's cough link cash now, is it? <laughs> new season, new ideas, Ruck. I'm an innovator. Oh, yes. Yeah. So the uh, cold insurance scheme? Ruck. You mean to tell me it didn't catch on? And I suppose before long, this too will be innovating into something else, will it, Mr P? Eh? <laughs> Cold mutton fat. Uncle? Up to their arms in it, dead and stiff. Oh, no, George, between you and me, not my milieu, not my milieu at all. Hereabouts they just trickle. I'm the cascading sort. Always was. Well, like your dad. And, oh... Heaven knows I've tried all manner of things. Well, best of all, well, yes, that insurance scheme of mine against colds. Pay just a little each week, and then the moment you can produce an authentic sniff. <laughs> but would they take to the idea hereabouts? No, they was blind to it. And the secret, Uncle? John? Oh! <laughs> Pleased you reminded me, young fella. Um, very pleased indeed. Um, you see over there, well, there, beyond Allstroff, there's a pair of stocks. Supposed to be medieval, like, hmm, from the time of the knights and peasants. Uh, now, the uh, secret is them stocks, they're made for no human being this side of Timbuktu. You could put a whole elephant in them stocks, George, and he'd still be up and trumpeting within the hour. Well, go and see. Go and see if what I'm saying ain't so. And just you come back whenever you's bored, all right? Great possibilities for a young man. Oh, oh, shh, shh, shh. You've been behaving yourself, George? Yes, my mother. Of course, the old lad. <laughs> now, George, listen here. Your mother, your Aunt Susan and me, we've been talking of turning you into a chemist. Oh, crikey, huh? George. I had hoped once that Lady Drew might do something for uh, you. Spoken to someone or got you into some position. But then it seems, I'm sorry to say this of you, George... It seems you're not the sort of boy things are done for. You don't accommodate yourself. Oh, a bit independent, you might say. Disobedient. Now, you tell me, George, have you learned any Latin at any time? Me? Learn Latin? Mm. But he has not. I think you'll find the Queen's English is good enough for most of us. <laughs> what do you say, Aunt Susan? He'll have to learn a little Latin to qualify. Materia Medica and all. Mm. Oh, Teddy! There's that old fella be what's it down at the grammar school here. He knows Latin. She means the grammar school down the road was just been rooted into existence again by the charity commissioner. George could have lessons there. Well, what do you say? What, me learn mm. Latin. Do you really mean it? Well, if you have to learn Latin, you have to, and that's that. Just a little. But, but I've always wanted to. Latin. Oh. George? <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, you hear him, old Susan? Why, he's just like his father. <laughs> oh. Well. <clears throat> that he is. Oh, dear me. That he is. George, your aunt and uncle have been generosity itself. You're to behave. You hear? Yes, mother. There's a little trust fund in your name I've been able to give them. Not much, just a few hundred pounds. But you must learn. And above all, you mustn't set yourself up against those who are above you and better than you. Understood? Yes, Mother. Stand back now. Oh. George. Mother. Kiss me. <gasps> My mother, you're crying. Be good, George. Mm. Yeah. Be good. In memory of your mother.
So, P equals constant times 1 over volume, which is to say if the volume of a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature is inversely proportional to the pressure, then... And if the volume of a fixed mass of gas at constant pressure is directly proportional to the absolute temperature, which is to say P equals constant times T, where T is in degrees Kelvin. But that's not possible. Start again. If the volume of a fixed mass of gas... Here it comes! Hey, big stopper! Right on those big lips of yours! You have to catch me first, Larry! Of course! Of course! Oh, oh, George! Aunt? It's silly your homework. He's almost ready to eat. Leave him be up, Susan. Never you're happier than when he's at his books. Right, George? Right, Uncle. Oh, oh, sacramental wine. Well, who could that be? We closed an hour ago. I'll go, I'll go. Hmm? Uncle, I don't think you're in any fit state to receive customers. <laughs> Indeed, I don't. Overexcited. Uh, now, Susan. Oh. Uh, by the way, George, mind lending me some of them squared papers of yours? Oh, you mean the... Oh, yeah, that there for your calculus and variations exam. Oh, graph paper. That's the stuff. Hand me some of it, will you? Of course. But why? Ah, stock exchange. Meteorology. That's why Christianolos. Uncle? A uh, little theory. I'll um, explain it later, perhaps. Oh, George, your Aunt Susan and me, we's proud as punch at how you've tamed your studies these last few months. Proud as punch. Why, I bet you could teach old Ruck and them others down the high street a thing or two about gas and states of matter, as am I right? <laughs> From what you say, Uncle, sounds to me like old Ruck is no matter and all gas. What? <laughs> What's that you say? <laughs> Why, Aunt Susan, listen to what our George just said. You say that again, George, for Aunt Susan, hmm? Teddy, hmm? George, won't no customer. What's the postman? Why, this, huh? Special delivery paid for by um, Lady Drew, care of Blades Over House. Aunt Susan? Oh, George, this letter, why, it's the saddest old thing. Your mother... Your poor mother. Be her boy over there. Mrs. Ponderevo's boy. Indeed, ma'am. So that rather portly individual in the badly dyed trousers and that ridiculous silk hat. The boy's uncle. Him as what looks after the boy nowadays, I believe. Indeed, you don't say. A trifle inconsiderate, didn't you feel? Ma'am? Mrs. Ponderevo. To die on us suddenly like that. Before we could even find a replacement. Well, a, a fine spring morning for it all the same, ma'am. Spring, you say? Is it really spring already? Well, well. all right, George. I'm just here. And your uncle's over yonder all chatting to the vicar. You want to cry? <laughs> just you go ahead. <laughs> Why, I didn't even notice. Nobody did. Is he without homework, are you? Well, Uncle, another exam next week. Oh, I know, but... Come through to the shop, will you? Now, about that Mother Shipton sleeping syrup, you show that where I told you. This morning, we've cleared our board stock. Uh, and, and the quinine? Top shelf left, like you said. No, we're running low. <laughs> oh, splendid, splendid. The more space, the better. Eh? Space, ready and waiting for Tono Bungay. Sorry? I think. Let's get some air. Uh, evening, Ruck. Evening, Ponderevo. Cooking up your next brilliant scheme for us, are you? <laughs> uh, oh, my. 
Don't change, do it. Anyone with a bit of buzz and sizzle, anyone prepared to say snap, they moved out years ago. As for them that's left, well, oh, look at the place. <laughs> you, you can't happen to think, George, of something everybody wants and hasn't got. I mean, something you could turn out retail under a shilling, say. Perhaps I should get back to my homework. Uh, uh, George, I've been thinking... Oh, I wish I'd been born American. Uncle. America, now there's a land where things hum. I mean, take their stock exchange, take Wall Street, take cornering. What's that? Well, imagine, for example, that quinine on the shelves there. Then imagine there's a tropical war breaks out, see? And on our shelves, we just happen to have all the quinine in the world. That's cornering. I ask you, picture all the suffering babies yowling for it. What would them doctors do? Well, they'd find it rather a nuisance, wouldn't they? <laughs> nuisance, George? Nuisance? they got to look out for themselves. By Jove, yes. They'll do you if they can, so you do them, right? Like brigands. Like what? You're up in the mountains, right? The Balkans, with all the queen he never was. Well, soon as they snap, along comes some millionaire's pampered wife, gone ill with malaria. I thought you said babies. No, no, there's a squeeze. And no mistake, outside, in his motor car, some millionaire offering you for your quinine any price you'd care to mention. But what would they make of that in Wimblehurst now? I tell you, nothing. Because they got no romance in their soul. Romance? Yes, indeed, the romance of commerce, George. Men made or done for in an hour. It struck me, I said... Quinine could have well have said mines and railways could have said Union Pacific George Uncle <laughs> One week the shares is up, next week they're down. Now to the untutored eye it looks like well uh, hit and miss. Well, isn't it hit and miss? Oh, excuse me, George, your aunt Susan and me, I've said it before, we're delighted the way you've come on in your studies, but this no, this it's a matter of experience. The trained eye. Crest and hollows. Buy on the hollow, sell on the crest. There's a system. Scientific and verifiable. Is that why you wanted the graph paper? <laughs> and that is not all. Listen. I'm listening. Tono Bungay. What? <laughs> I'll try again. Tono Bungay. That's what I thought you said. Well, well what? What is it? That's what you've got to ask. Then, <laughs> what won't it be, eh? But, hmm? All right. What is Tono Bungay? Ah, I'm afraid I could say no more at present, George. Industrial secret, don't you know? But watch this place. I tell you, there's more to follow. Oh, George. It was never anything grand, this shop of ours. But it was a larky little old home to your uncle and me. And our first. Oh. I, I think I'll uh, just hop upstairs, powder the old nose. Well, I believe that's all, Mr Mantell. You'll find it a quiet little business, so long as you run it on... Uh, quiet lines. Right you are, Mr P. But uh, any problems, if you need to know anything else, business, place or people, I'll always explain fully. You got the address of our new uh, London residence. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, uh, you, you might find you're just a little overstocked on pill anti-bill. Mr P? Well, these last days, well, I, I found it soothed my mind making them amid all the Upheaval, so I just carried on making them uh, thousands of them. <laughs> I'm sure I'll manage. <laughs> and you, George? <laughs> Seems that you and your indentures are part of my stocks too now. Eh? <laughs> well, I'll just out and take the air down the high street. <laughs> Leave you <laughs> to make your farewells and all. <laughs> well... That's that. I do believe. 
Oh, it's lock, stock and barrel, Uncle? It is. It is. Oh, your aunt's unhappy, of course. It's made her cry. Well, who wouldn't it? But, uh, well, she's a first-rate brick, whatever comes along. Now, yeah, buoyant as ever. He's a corker. As he's crises, as try character. And my apprenticeship? Oh, no, don't worry about that. Mr Mantell says he's perfectly satisfied to transfer it to him. He's a good man, George. Oh, my, my. <laughs> the battle of life, eh? Ups and downs. I could have sworn them Union Pacific calculations would come up trumps. The crests and hollows, you mean? Well... Uncle, you could have used my trust fund. It was a hundred to one that I was right. A hundred to one. I left out just one tiny factor in my analysis. I worked it out afterwards. And here we are, spiked on the off chance. If only I'd have kept back a little. Just a little. Why, I'd have had it on UP next day, like a shot, and come out on the rise. Bob's your uncle. Well, there's my trust fund. You could use that. You know, the, the, the lesson I draw from this, never put all your resources onto the one chance. Have forces in reserve. Yeah. See, I've been pondering in my night watches since. It's a reproof for pride. At bottom, I'm a mystic in these things, I suppose. You calculate you're going to do this or that, but at bottom, who knows at all what he's doing? And when you most believe you're doing things your way, why? You're being led. And my trust fund? George? Well, would it make any difference if you were to use that? Oh. <laughs> I did use it. What? Well, after all, I'm a particular luck. I am careful luck. I am to think I'd have touched those Union Pacifics with a single penny of your trust money if I hadn't thought it a thoroughly good thing. Uh, and there's some of it left, George. Oh, uh, a little. How much? Oh, never you worry about that, my boy. Soon as I've got time to sit down and figure it out on paper, I'll calculate just how much I owe you and mark my words. I'll pay you back 20 shillings in the pound before I'm done. See if I won't. <laughs> I'll be writing to you. Now, your Aunt Susan and I, well, we've got very comfortable little rooms up there in London. Not the scenery nor the air we get round here, perhaps, but very comfortable, considering. And my new uh, situation, I got it within 24 hours. An important firm, one of the best. Yes, I looked to that. Others offered, of course, I might have got, say, four or five shillings a week more elsewhere. But, but I said to them plainly, your wages... There to be going on with. Opportunities, my game. Development. Yeah. I think we understood one another, George. It's just... Damn them others! Uncle? Uh, Rack the butcher, Marbell, the grocer, Snape, the barber, all those damn stick in the mud and die slowly tradespeople hereabouts. How they'll grin! Uh, it's not quite the way your Aunt Susan and me meant to leave Wimblehurst, eh? Oh. Well, here's old Orf. Orf to home number two. I can carry some of those. Bless you, George. How oh, I'll miss you. But, Mr Mantell, he'll see you well. He's a good man. Kind. And I'll never wrong about <laughs> Need a hand, Mrs. Ponderivo. I'll manage. So, it's off to make your fortune elsewhere, then, is it, Ponderivo? Pleasant day, Ruck. Off to innovate up in London, eh? <laughs> That's a load, Aunt Susan. What have you got there? A whole needle workshop? <laughs> so, uh, kiss your aunt, George. Of course. Stick to your old science and things, you hear? Them verifiables. Then write and tell me when they make you a professor. 
You promise? And, and George, that uh, other uh, private matter between us... You mean Tono Bungay? Not a word. No, the uh, money. My trust fund. I will be writing to you fully about that. Mark my words. Sir? You tell me, if you can. Your practical work seems to stop dead. Your attendance becomes lamentable. As for your most recent examination marks, good grief, man. Why, in this last exam, there was even a girl got the better of you. So, what do you have to say for yourself? Nothing, sir. Nothing? Think, pondered Evo. What will become of you when your scholarship runs out? There's not any um, personal explanation, is there? Family or a, a woman? Yeah, have it your way. Ponderivo, you came up to London as a scholar. Do you seriously wish to leave it as a spoiler and a scoundrel? Hmm? Of course, if I'd had the nerve, I'd have told him the truth. I just want to marry you and let his damn degree go hang. You shouldn't talk like that. Why ever not? I love you, Mary, and I... I love you. It's all I ever think about. Stop that, <laughs> Mother Mother. There you are. <laughs> Father, this is George. Oh. I told you about. Mm -hmm. When I couldn't find my purse on the omnibus and he... he Indeed, the money. Oh, George. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I, I may call you George. Oh, certainly, sir. How do you do? Well, Mrs. Ramboat and me wanted to thank you for the kindness as you showed to our Marion in that matter of the bus fare. Well, that's why we invited you to tea. I'm delighted to be here, sir. <clears throat> uh, Marion tells us she's bumped into you down at the Science Museum as well. Uh, well, to be truthful, <laughs> scarcely bumped into, sir. I'd seen her in lunch hours George. and... George. Well, well. <clears throat> of course, there's a lot of this science about nowadays. But I sometimes wonder a bit what good it does, don't you? I mean, uh, give me eat <laughs> for me tomatoes allotment... <laughs> I could do such a lot with it. Mm. <laughs> but it's uh, not the sort of thing you science fellows care about, I'm thinking. Sir? What tomatoes uh, eat? Oh, I don't know about that, sir. It seems to me that science is not just for the here and now, it's the future as well. In fact, I'd say one of the most... Well, important... well, well, I'll go and find the missus. See about that tea. George. Mm. Did you have to wear a collar like that? Mother's so particular. You still haven't answered me. I love you. I want to marry you. Don't you love me, Marion? Well, I don't know. One has to be sensible. I, I like going about with you, George. Can't we keep on as we are? As for that tie... Oh, what's wrong with it? Well, you tie your handkerchief... Oh, come here, money. There now. Isn't that... <laughs> oh, what's this? Gosh, the telegram... What telegram? Care of Ponderevo properties, indeed. <laughs> what properties? George, where are you? Come this address, double quick. Tono Bungay. Tono what? Tono Bungay. What does that mean? George, that you come in, boy, come in. If you just give me a minute while I finish this piece of business, and now, um, Sydney, ain't it? That's right, sir. Well, tell me again what you're to do, Sydney. I'm to walk up and down, up and down, up and down Farringdon Street, there in there. Uh, this thing. Well, put it on, old chap, put it on. What use a sandwich, man, when it's all sandwich and no man, eh? Hey? <laughs> and, uh, shouting the secret of vigour, yeah. Tono Bungay. <laughs> the secret of vigour, Tono Bungay. The secret uh, of vigour. Yes, Tono... yes, I, I think uh, you got it learned off all right. Uh, um, well, what are you waiting for? Sir... Oh, go to it, man. Take the message to the people. And, um, Sydney. Yes, sir. A little more. Vigour yourself, perhaps. Uh, yes, sir. The secret of vigour. Uh -huh. Tono Bungay. 
The secret of vigor. Tono Bunga. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. You see that fella's hat? Mm. Fair treat. You don't see poverty like that in Wimblehurst. No chance. But then that's London for you, ain't it? The centre of civilization, the heart of the world. A whirlpool, a maelstrom whirls you up and whirls you down. And... And before I go any further, let me say, oh, how very nice to see you, dear boy. <laughs> what do you think of these new premises? Well, eh? I'm impressed. But how did you ever afford... <laughs> There's no need to whisper it now, George. Shout it loud. Tono! Tono Bunge! <laughs> <laughs> but, but, Uncle, what is Tono Bunge? Ah, what is it not? <laughs> you come through here. Come here and see... See the words, sir. Now, this here is the packing department. Red and Eustace. Fred. Morning, sir. Morning, lads. Morning, sir. Good don't, morning, Mr. Pottery. Man. Don't skip on that straw, boys. Okay, sir. <laughs> there you go, sir. And this here is the art department. Yeah. Jane, actually. Them posters, labels on the bottle. That's her work. Everything all right, Janey? Fine, thanks, Mr. P. <laughs> Splendid. Splendid. Yeah. Who here is, is the typing pool? <laughs> Effie. Hi, Mary. Just show my nephew George round. Effie. Mary. Morning, sir. Morning. And now through here is the laboratory. Yeah, well, the temporary laboratory. You understand? I'll just find my key. <sighs> I have to lock it, of course. Industrial secrets and all, but you and me, scientist to scientist, eh, George? A privileged peek into the mysteries of creation. Well, but where's the laboratory? <laughs> this is it. Just these old bottles and tubes and a tank of... of what? Coloured water. Ah, there is the odd special ingredient. Oh, you mean that cheap brandy on a filter? Yeah. Why, that's the noise. <laughs> I thought I knew it. The dear old air pump from where? I mean, today, Farringdon Street, tomorrow, the world. Why not? Another cigar? Uh, no, thanks. Yeah. But is it, well, honest? Oh, absolutely bona fide. Then, well, splendid. Good Lord. Even to imagine you one day sitting in a place like this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see how they knew me at the door? Mm. Live place, mm. George. I for the coming man. I'm afloat, I'm afloat on the fierce flowing tide. The ocean's my home and my bark is my bride. Uncle, please, people are looking. Oh, let them look. Oh, but to get even this far, however did you find the capital? Oh, this wholesale chemist, that uh, temporarily embarrassed printer, promise of a long credit here, share of profits there, and the old magazine and newspaper. Oh, I played them off one against the other, didn't I? Ah. Uh, uh, now... I know by rights that business of your trust fund, I suppose I ought, well, in strict legality, to have put that straight first. But, um, oh, it was a bold thing to do, George, and thank the heavens it's all come out right, as you can see for yourself. And I repeat, this is only the beginning. Once our advertisements start to appear regular, well, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Mark my words, if Tono Bungay don't become a household name. So now, this is where you come in, eh? What do you say? Um, I'm very happy for you, Uncle. Really, I am. For you and Aunt Susan. George, that ain't what I wanted to hear. Nor your Aunt Susan, neither. Oh, we want you in on this. I need you. Fact is, I've always believed in you, and trust me, I know a bit about character. You've got, well, a sort of uh, dismal grit. Bark your shins, rouse you, and you'll go. Oh, the way you put away that Latin at Wimblehurst. Whoosh! The way you sorted out my shelves and my stock keeping. Whoosh! Then your science and all that. Whoosh! Come in with me. You shan't have to write a single advertisement or piece of copy. That's my line. You, it's the developing and organising I need. 
I can offer you 300 a year straight off. Eh? What do you think? So what did you say? Well, I said I'd think about it. Look here, Marion. To get married, how much do we need? What's the good of going yeah, over? Would I... you marry on 300 a year? That's six pounds a week. One could manage on that easily. Hmm. Smithy's brother, no. No, he only gets 250. Will you marry me if I get 300 a year? If? <laughs> then it's a bargain. We shake hands on it. Closing now! Well? Oh, this is silly. Closing, ladies and gentlemen, please. Do we or don't we? <sighs> if you insist. Then, Mutney, this means we're really... Yes, Ming? Engaged? Yes. Oh, Mutney, you'll have to wait years. What good can it do? Come here, sir, if you would. Hello, it's George. Oh, so oh. Oh, very lovely to see you again. Oh. Oh. Shall I serve the tea now, Mim? Oh, uh, not till Mr Ponderevo comes, uh, uh, Clary. That'll be all for now. You're looking very jolly, aren't you? Why, George, you're a man. <laughs> what did you expect? Been in love yet? <clears throat> uh, well, all in good time. So, what do you think? It's a swell house, no? Oh, indeed. Thank gosh you've even got a maid. Well, he all says the business will stand it. <laughs> Either do that or smash. You are coming in. Oh, George, don't say you won't. But Aunt Susan... Do you quite understand? It's a quack medicine. It's trash. Well, there's no law against selling quack medicine that I know of. It's our only chance. If it doesn't go, I... Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> oh, at him, silly old concertina. Don't sing that one, you old walrus. Sing I'm afloat. Hello, George. <laughs> Come along at last, have you? Oh, got some tea cake, have you? Mm? Had time to think it over. <clears throat> Look here, Uncle. Did you really mean that when you said you'd pay me 300 a year? Oh, that's nothing. The thing to freeze on to when the time comes is your tenth of the vendor's share. Yeah, but, listen, uh, the 300, is that guaranteed or not? If you really want it so much, I could practically pay you 300 here and now across this teapot. So, what's it to be? Well, I'll tell you one thing. There where you were bottling and packing, mm. you ought to cover the corks before labelling round the bottle. George? Huh? Why? Well, because sometimes they'll make a mess of the cork job and then the label's wasted. Yeah, but... And here's another thing. Why, in the devil's name, do people continue to build these boxes for packing, put the stuff in, then nail on the lid after? Oh, uh, because they always have. How else do you do it? Oh, why not pack the bottles from the side, then nail up it quicker, fewer breakages? Why, Tono Bungay would practically pack itself. As for those poor girls you've hired, working without ventilation, you'll get twice the work out of them if I'm... <laughs> you hear that, Aunt Susan? Whoosh! Whoosh! Welcome on board, George. Welcome on board. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, and by the way, there's something else. I'm intending to get married. <gasps> George! <laughs> and about time, too. Why didn't you say to me, at least, who is she? Tell me everything about her. Uh, she's called Marion. Oh, and is she beautiful? I don't know. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think she might be the most beautiful person in the world. Oh. Well, this is oh. splendid. Aunt Susan, we should waste no more time. Hold us a little dinner party to meet the lovely bride. What do you say? Next week, perhaps, George? Uh, After you settle in? Uh, now, George, you've seen the uh, factory. Here's the terrain. The what? A battle lines, plan of attack. Come over here to the map. <clears throat> Pink underlines for the orders. Flags for the advertisements, spilling up already. First the middle classes in London, then the outer suburbs, then the home counties. Conquest, province by province, like soldiers. Shouldn't we have another look at the bottling first? It all seems so slow. Well, perhaps we should. What did you have in mind? Well, 
Take a look at this. It's just a sketch at present, but um, <clears throat> here we have a tap and a concentrate of the mixture, no. right? And here we line up the bottles on a glass incline made slippery with running water. <laughs> Splendid! Now, this I'm really proud of. Mm. It's a level indicator, a kind of float arrangement. <laughs> I'm afloat, I'm afloat on a fierce flowing time. Uncle, please. Right, George, sorry. Far away. Now, here's a second tap, this time with distilled water. More old gravy, Marion. Thank you. That's right, lash it on. Well, I can't say often enough how good it does me to see young George here so finely set up. And to meet you, Marion. Thank you. So, you'll be looking for somewhere to live, I suppose. Yes, we... Uh, ah, that's we... the spirit. And uh, by the way, don't worry about money when you do. We'll help you, won't we, Susan? Mm -hmm. Why did I say 300 a year? Five, I'm reckoning now, to get married on. We were thinking. I was thinking. Perhaps if we could find somewhere near the business... Yes, so I'm accessible to St Paul's or Cannon Street or... George, is that a good idea? How do you mean? The girl's got a head on her shoulders. After all, only a matter of time before Tono Bungay needs bigger premises somewhere else. That... Marion? Ealing. What? Ealing's where I'd like. Uh, away from all the smoke and bustle. Nicer, quieter sort of people. George? Well, well. So, tell me, Marion, you'll be having a big old splash for the wedding, I suppose. Carriages and top hats and all the men in them funny waistcoats. What stops them from talking proper because it gives them indigestion? <laughs> oh, Susan! <laughs> if we can afford it. Oh, you can. I'll see to that. I was rather thinking... George? Well, couldn't we settle for a registry office? I mean, do we really want all that kind of circus with fripperies and superstitions? Well, and... I shouldn't feel married else. Well, uh, I can't marry at a registry office. Why ever not? Well, it's horrid. I can't. I won't, so there. Do you really mind so much, George? After all, chacon sans goutte, eh, hey, Marion? Horses for courses? That wasn't no horse, nor the first course neither was quality beef. <laughs> well, who can tell when it's Aunt Susan's a la carte, eh? eh? <laughs> what, me, Teddy? Put the old car before the horse? <laughs> 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 um, I'm sorry, Marion. Uncle Teddy and I was only trying I'm to... I'm afraid I'm not clever enough to understand that sort of conversation. Marion, it's not a question of clever. It's simply... Well, if we can't seem to agree on anything, I don't see why we should go on talking, do you? Mm. Put in, anyone. Ah, you look tired, George. Up half the night, Uncle, that's why. Working on this drawing for the new labelling process. You look to the map lately. We're going into Wales. We are. Yeah. And, um, well, capital costs, overheads and expenditures for the next audit, well, that's all been done. Your skill, George, your strength. Oh, and by the by, the wedding, uh, not long now, I'm thinking, have you and Marion settled that little uh, difference of opinion over the arrangements? You could say that. No carriages, no thousands of guests, no church bells banging away, in fact, no church altogether. Is that so? Absolutely. I put my foot down. To you and Marion. She's looking lovely. Yes. A lovely looking girl. Uh, anything wrong, Aunt Susan? Wrong? Of course not. Just me old weepies coming on. <laughs> George, here's Smithy. Oh, yes. Now, how are you, Smithy? Enjoying yourself? I'm sure my brother and his wife had more bridesmaids than this. You don't say. <laughs> But then you seem a little, shall we say, underrepresented in general. Oh, whatever can you mean? Just your aunt and uncle. But then, <laughs> we know about you, George. <laughs> you clever chaps, you're so brainy, you've probably stored them away in a bottle. <laughs> Ready to wheel them out when stocks run low. <laughs> like Tono Bungay. Yes, like Tono Bungay. <laughs> well... Here's wishing you well, George. Thank you, sir. See there, across the way, mm -hmm. 
There was a funeral there yesterday. Oh. Quite a smart affair it were, with a glass hearse and all. You don't say. Now, an hearse like that, the sun shining through it, that'd be the answer to all my problems. Sir? Glass hearse like that, and me tomatoes were grown like anything. Oh. <laughs> all the very, very best, George. Have a very, very, very nice time. God bless you both. Have a wonderful holiday. But you'll keep your mind on that design we mentioned, won't you, George? Sir? To make me tomatoes grow. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 oh, splendid Well, thank goodness that's all over. Mutney? Next stop, Hastings. A new life, new horizons. Oh, you look so lovely. Why, thank you, darling, but you were the lovely one, my little Ming. And you're not cross. Cross? Why? Well, having it all proper. Oh, my dear Ming. Here, let me give you a kiss. No, just a little one. Oh, oh, Ming. Well, I, I think all, all that champagne of your uncle's... You only had a couple of glasses. Yeah, well, I, I think it's given me a, a headache. Promise me something, Mutney. Darling, you have only to name it. The sun, the moon. Promise me you'll buy a silk hat and a black coat so you'll always look nice for Sunday. When we go to church with Smithy. So... Tell me what you think of this new poster Janie's come up with for Scotland. Scotland? Well, well, of course, being away, you ain't had a chance to look at the map. England, Wales, booming, George. So now... Tono, Bungay, Thistlebrand. And here's our old fog poster. Right, but... Uh, uh, well, you see that pea super? Well, the odd stag here, the occasional eagle over there, and a splash of purple heather, and Bob's your uncle. We got ourselves an authentic Highland mist. What do you say? And a fella in tweeds and a bowler smoking a briar? Simple. Uncle? We give him a kilt. You don't mean it. They're in full view of everyone. I do. <gasps> but what did the other girls say? They was too busy gawping to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, so there you are. Been looked after, Smithy. More tea? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I was just saying to Marion, George, that, uh, that that mirror on the mantel, why it needs covering... Whatever for? Well, don't all the best people cover their mirrors? Oh, pay no attention, Smithy. George, you like such queer things. Have a good solid armchair to read in, you mean? My brother and his wife, they've covered every mirror. Every light fixture. You don't say. Oh, goodness, what's that thing? George. That's my little housewarming present to you both. <laughs> Smithy's so kind. Well, you can't have a house without a rubber plant in the window, can you? But I can't get to my books anymore. All the best modern people do. And I'm nothing if not modern, you know. It's lovely, absolutely lovely. Isn't it, George? My God, Uncle. Hmm? Those people in the waiting room, are they all trying to sell us an idea? Oh, morning, George. So, uh, what's that you say? I said those people are out in the waiting room. Listen, I've been thinking. What do you say to Tono Bungay chocolates? Well... Rather that than the last one. Eh? Oh, Tono Bungay for a uh, sea sickness, was it? Oh, just flying a kite. That's all no good hiding a light under a bushel. No, but this, no, it's the real thing. I can see it now. Climbers hanging from the cliffs. Cyclist champions. Mounted messengers on the Aches to Ghent ride. Soldiers lying in action under a hot sun. And here's the snap. You can go for 24 hours on Tono Bungay chocolate. I notice you don't say whether you can return on the same commodity. How do you mean? Well, I can see it now. Aromatic. Mm -hmm. Attractive. Oh, good, good. Likely to become a bad habit and train people in the use of stronger tonics. Insidiously dangerous to people with defective kidneys. Ah, oh, George. Oh, oh. oh, by the way, hmm? splendid dinner last night at the Guildhall. Oh. Did your Aunt Susan and me proud they did. And I met a most interesting young fella into soap. 
soap. That's right, except he wishes he weren't. Family business, don't you know? His pa and his uncle popped their clogs on practically the same day, and there's our young Jiminy Watson having to carry on the business to Searle while hating every bloomin' moment of it. George? Well, I'll be frank, almost gave me the business there and then on a plate he did if I just promised to step in and take it over. Says he wants to wash his hands of it all. <laughs> I say. No, that's rather good. You get him to soap him, mm. him wanting to, to wash his hands. Hmm? You don't remember his name, of course. Oh, well, 11,000 virgins. Oriental gums. I'll be snooking if I do. Well, I'm sure I wrote it down somewhere, sometime. On your cuff, perhaps? Sometime during the brandy and cigars? Oh, my cuff, of course, that's it. I'll, I'll just go and... Oh, crikey. Don't tell me. Clary's been and gone with the laundry already. I found it. Oh, what was the name of that soap? If I could just remember that. Only one thing for it. Uncle? Get Perkins up here right away, give him a bob or two. Yes. Then tell him to pop down Fortman Mason's double quick, tell him I want to see half a pound of every brand of soap that's ever been put on the market. Uh, <clears throat> it wasn't hmm? Moggs by any chance. <laughs> That's a fella! Oh, I knew I could rely on you, George. With Mog's Domestic Soaps. Another very attractive addition to the Ponderivo portfolio, wouldn't you say? Just as long as it sells. Oh, it will sell, my boy, you can be sure of that. No, I can see it now. Mog's Primrose Soap, as used by Mog's the first, Mog's the second, Mog's the third. And, and why, I shouldn't wonder, as it was used by the Black Prince himself to clean himself <laughs> up a bit. <laughs> Black Prince who needed... Did, did you... Did do you think they used soap in those days, do you? Oh, well, that's a good point there. I'll tell you what. What say we get one of them eminent historians to run us up a little biog? No, none of your drum and trumpet history. No fear. What we want to know is what did they put in their hot baths after a round of jousting? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and in the Middle Ages, did they do anything for housemaid's knee? Yes, tell us that, I say. The home, George. I'm sorry. We've got to bring the home up to date. That's my idea. We've got to straighten it up, organise it, make a civilised domestic machine out of it. Hey, you know what? We ought to bring in some of them new art chaps to design for us too. Now, what do you say? Beautiful jam pots, as would do Frederick Morris proud, instead of all these silly, ugly things we got round us. Patent carpet sweepers by those Greenwood chaps. Bedpans you'd wish to polish up and hang on your walls. Oh, housemaid's boxes, it'd be a positive pleasure to fall over. Yeah? <laughs> you see see the notion, George? You, you get the picture. Oh, George, you know I don't like you to do that. Well, why ever not? We're well and truly married, aren't we? I've been for months. Yes, but, I mean, there's, there's a time and a place for everything. Then let's go there now, upstairs. What, seven o'clock in the evening? Before we've even had supper? What? That's horrid. Oh, very well. <laughs> and another thing. Yes? Oh, never mind. It's not for me to say, but... but do you have to wear curl papers in your hair quite so often? Well, it's only when I'm about the house. Yes, but... It... Well, after all, there's no one likely to see, is there? You mean no one but myself? Mm, that's right. Oh, by the way, I've asked Smithy over for the weekend. Again? She hasn't been for weeks. Yeah, two weeks, actually. George? Is there something wrong? No. Nothing wrong. You're looking a bit tired, George. You work too hard. <laughs> Marion Bonnie as ever, is she? Yes, though... Uh... George? Well, all marriages... Oh, there you a... are. Tell me, George, what do you think of Napoleon? Oh, Tono Bungay Napoleon Brandy, perhaps? No, this new book of your aunt's on Napoleon Bonaparte... <laughs> I've uh, wondered where that had got to. <laughs> you don't sometimes figure, as there's a certain resemblance, when I stand in profile against the light, so my, my left profile, of course. <laughs> Did old Boney look like he'd swallowed a cannonball too, Teddy? <laughs> now, Susan, 
Well, well, never mind. Cigar, George. Ah, uh, why not? Oh, I'll be off to finish our packing. Now, we then. pay people good money for that. I haven't breathed that new china I bought, no fear. Good to see you, George. Mm. Uh, here for anything special, old chap? Oh, not really. Uh, just uh, Wales, Scotland. And now we're about to offer Tono Bungay to the public, the flotation and all. We're afloat, we're afloat. Uh, well, well I, I thought, with uh, your permission, I'd do a quick run round the country, just pop in and check everything in shipshape. Oh, good idea. Nothing like seeing the chaps behind the counters, I find, pumping it all into the great stomach of the people. Besides, uh, do you good. Uncle? Get you out of the house for a bit. Quiet. You want to take the accounts with you, of course, be au fait on the paperwork. Gosh, I never thought I'll tell it. you what, why not ask one of the girls to help you? That Effie, for instance. Do you have to? First Cardiff, then Edinburgh. Don't you employ travellers for that sort of thing? It's not the same. Anyone would think you didn't like staying at home. Did you never think I might get lonely? Good grief, when your friend Smith is round here practically every day. You've never liked her, have you? Did I say that? Well, if you're going to carry on like this, leaving me so dull, oh, I shall go ahead and do it. I shall get that lovely little terrier we saw in the shop. I've already chosen its name. Which is? Miggles. <laughs> so now there's the three of us. Mutney, Ming and... Miggles, Yes! Oh, oh, won't that be lovely? There you are, Mr P. All tight up. That's really very good of you, Effie. Oh, that to be done, didn't it? Can't have you going up north empty-handed. Well, you'll be off then. Yes, although, um... What about yourself? Sir? Right. Friday night, and I've kept you slaving away long past your time to go home. Oh, well, me? I'm staying up west for the weekend with a girlfriend. Oh, well, then, um... Then may I take you to dinner? Oh, what about your train? Well, they run trains in the morning, don't they? <laughs> oh, you're quite right. <laughs> George! Susan! Over here! Then. I grew up near here before I ever knew you. <laughs> if I stand here on the terrace, and if you look due south... And Marion? I, uh, well, and uh, Uncle Teddy, is he here? Oh, he's here, all right. He's over there talking to Mrs Mumble. At least I think she's called Mumble. They're all called Mumble, as far as I can gather. <laughs> Tell you what, grab yourself a cucumber sandwich and there's tea there beside you. Lashings of it. Hey, up. here's trouble. Hmm? Why, Mrs. Underivo. Hello, Vicar. Meet my nephew, George. Oh, delighted, I'm sure. Mrs. Underivo, I was just now saying how splendid a gathering it is to think that fine old Lady Grove is finally inhabited again. One so misses the house influence, I find. You see, down here in Kent, well, life can grow just a little dull. The youngsters drift away to London. I often think music's one answer. But alas, our penniless little church down the road. Now, if only some kind benefactor could find it in himself to donate a new organ. I say, Vicar, I spy a whole bevy of people with empty cups over oh. there. Would you mind very much to old trot about with a tea urn? Oh, only too delighted. Trot. <laughs> Excellent expression. <laughs> So what do you think of this new house of ours? It's splendid. Uh, what's happening over there, beyond the pond? Oh, blow me if your uncle hasn't already had the drains up. And, yes, most of the lawns with them. <laughs> you know, I sometimes think what pleases him most is to stand there in the mud and the muck, up to his old ankles in it, dispensing whiskey to the workmen like he was cock of the yard. <laughs> Lord Muck, indeed. <laughs> As for them colours he's chosen for the paintwork inside, he's only gone and given each bedroom the name of some old hero of his. No prizes either for guessing what he's called his old snuggery. Um, Napoleon.
Napoleon? Oh. Got it in one. What a splotcher. <laughs> if it weren't for the maids, I'd sneak up there myself. I'd paint old Pondo on the door. Oh, George! <laughs> there you are at last. Hello, Uncle. What say we sneak away from Napoleon and have us a chin wag, eh? But I'll tell you one thing, George. Mm -hmm. Them herbaceous borders over there. Can't. I think I've found me a vocation. <laughs> Uh, this way, come in. Have a whiskey. <laughs> no, oh, wise man. Wise man. Listen, I've been thinking. Tino Bungay, then Mog Soap Limited, and after that, well, as you know, Skinnerton's polishes, Runcorn's minces and coffee mills. All our domestic utilities, or do oot, as I believe they're already calling it down in the city. It's just, well, I've, I've been thinking, and when I get to thinking, you're always the one I turn to first. Uncle? Just, uh, I'm asking myself, this what we've built up, is it enough, George? Enough? Hmm? Uncle? Tono Bungay's paying 12 nowadays. Oh, 13, 13. Household services, 10. Do Oot, 11. Mog's domestic, 7. Uh, 8, I think you're fine, George. Yeah, then on top of that, uh, Roburn's antiseptics, Hodgson's soaks and bath crystals. You bought them up, all of them. Well, grasp the cosmic oyster while it gapes. What more could you possibly want? I want culture, George. I'm sorry? You heard... Culture! Damn it! We aren't au fait! Eh? Socially, we're not au fait! I'll come to the point. It, it isn't any particular thing, but the other night, your Aunt Susan and I, we was at this etiquette banquet. I, I ate too much of that fishy stuff at first, you know, like salt frog spawn, and well, to tell you the truth, I was a bit confused by the olives, and... Oh, well... Be damned if I knew which wine was supposed to be which. Had to ask each time. I mean, well, for one thing, puts your talk all wrong, don't it? And it's not good for business. We can't have gentry hereabouts calling us poovenous. So what exactly did you have in mind? Huh? First thing, it's to learn the whole blessed game, right? Beat em at it. Like, which wines... Would that be s'mour, sir, or, or burgundy? We got to get us more style. Let's steal, say, lum. And how long do you think I need? To beat em at it, to, to learn the whole bag of tricks and get culture. Oh, six months? Ah, Effie. Is that uh, one of the new typewriters? It is, Mr. P. I want you to come away with me. I came? Well, shouldn't uh, we... Listen, we can't talk here. Where'd you go at five? Along the embankment to Charing Cross. None of the others go that way. About half past five, then? Yes, half past five. These invoices go, miss? Oh, yes, Bert. Go well, I'm glad they're working properly, Effie. Uh, just let us know if they have any teething problems. Right you are, sir. There, there. Marion! You've come home. Well, did you think I wouldn't? Where have you been this time? Uh, East Coast. There's been quite a surge on the sales front down there. In fact, it seems we no sooner bring in a new supply than they're off the shelves and... I know. Hmm? By Jove. I believe you do. And then you come home to me. I didn't dream. How could you do such a thing? Who knows about this? How do you know about this? Smith, his brother and his wife. They saw you and... They were at Cromer. In the same hotel. Confound Cromer. Yes. How could you bring yourself... I should like to wring Smithy's brother's neck... I'd always thought that anyhow, you couldn't deceive me. Oh, I suppose all men are horrid when it comes to this kind of thing. I didn't mean you to know. It's rough on you, but I, I 
had the devil of a time. You've never cared for me. I have cared for you. To, to think of you and her. Who is she? Where is she now? I don't believe I can ever touch you again. <laughs> Did you ever want to? What do you mean? Have you ever once, in all the time we've known each other, wanted to be with me physically? Wanted to make love with me? Wanted to go to bed with me? No. To you it was always horrid. Well, I suppose to her, this woman, it's not. To her, it's, it's perfectly natural to do these things with another woman's husband and just... Ad admit it. It's not all Snickers behind your hand with Smithy. I'd just like you to be nice. And the mere thought of it, of, of making love. It's revolting to you. And what if it is? Is it my fault if I'm made the way I am? No. It's not your fault. Oh, you must hate me. Marion. I made you wait, and now, oh, I suppose, you've had your revenge. Oh, thank heaven we never had children. Did we ever discuss it? Did I ever get the chance to talk about it? So, I'll... Uh, I'll go upstairs, I suppose. I'll, uh, I'll go upstairs and... Put my things in the spare room. Mother is coming to have tea with us today. Try to behave, won't you? Haven't I always? Till now. Do you love her? This woman? I'm not sure I know what love is anymore. But you... You want her. This minute now, when we're talking about her. Yes. Yes, I want her right enough. And you refuse to give her up? <clears throat> I won't do that. I can't do that. Well, then, if we can't live together, we ought to be free. I don't know anything of divorce, if that's what you mean. I, uh, I don't know how it's done. I shall have to ask somebody or look it up. Perhaps, after all, it is the thing to do. We may as well face it. And all this life together? You've hated it? Not all this life together. And this? Is this the only way? Oh, Marion. Oh, tell me, promise me. This can't be the only way. So, here we... Uh, yes. I believe we do. Oh, George. Is, is it really too late? Oh, Marion, please. I've been such a fool. All my life is a wreck. And now... Now I shall be alone. Money. Money don't leave me. I, I didn't understand think I did. No, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Hey, hey. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll stay in touch. Now about, uh, well, about, about the, uh, the legal thing. <laughs> will be all right financially. She'll never have to work again, I've seen to that. And left her the house in Ealing. 
Why, I dare say her tiresome friend Smithy has already moved in with her. But you, what about yourself? Well, I'll buy a place near her work. And I'll continue to see Effie, of course. And she said the other day, if it wasn't love, gosh, it was fun all the same. I tend to agree. Is that terribly irresponsible? Perhaps you need a bit of fun. Tell you what, what say we go shopping uptown, buy ourselves a huge cream tea and spend the evening in an expensive restaurant being very loud and noisy? <laughs> Georgie? You all right there? Counting the raindrops? Hmm? Hmm. I swear I saw an air balloon. And then a cloud covered it and... Uh... Yes. Yes, darling, I'm... I'm all right, really. Hey, Gloom Kings. Did you love your wife so well? <laughs> you know, Effie, there's so much I don't understand. Life is a thing that hurts. It hurts without logic or reason. I've blundered and I've hurt in my turn. I just didn't understand. Anyhow, there's no need to go hurting you, is there? Oh, <laughs> you just try it, George Ponterivo, and see what you get. Come here. Time to cheer you up. Oh, good to see you back on your feet, George. Long drive down, though. And a long week. So, how can I help you? Look here, Uncle. Um, I'm sick of this. Hello? What's up? Things are wrong. How's that? My life. It's a mess. An infinite mess. Oh, listen, George, <clears throat> these last few weeks, you, Marion, well, I mean, I partly understand, perhaps, but it's past history now, ain't it? Besides, there's just a good fish in the sea. Yeah, Uncle, it's not that. Oh, uh, that, that uh, a friend of yours, Effie, she the problem? No, not Effie. Ah, then... Uh, Effie's grand. Effie has been my salvation. It's just... Well... One day she'll want to take off, I know that. She's got brains and she's young, she'll want to lead her own life. That's her charm. And, Uncle, I want my own life to lead as well. I feel I've been making Tono Bungay since the day I was born. Oh, served us well, George, served us very of well. Of course it has. I'd be a fool to deny that. It's just... I'm sick... I'm sick of all this damned rascality. Aye? Aye? What rascality? You know... I'm a different sort of beast from you, Uncle. You float in all this bunkum. This what? I feel like a man who's floundering up and down, what? east and west. I can't stand it. I must get my foot on something solid or... I don't know what. Well, you've left me behind on this one. Now, what can you mean? Tono Bungay's solid? I mean, I've been thinking it over. All of it. I've made up my mind. I shall go in for work. Mm -hmm. Real work. Well, what do you call this here that we do? I've got an idea. It's an old idea I thought of years ago, but it's come back to me. Look, why should I fence about with you? <clears throat> Uncle, I believe the time has come for flying. Flying? Aeronautics. Machines heavier than air. It can be done, and I want to do it. Why, is there money in it? I don't know, and I don't care, but that's what I'm going to do. I've been talking to this engineer I've met called Cotthope. Arnold Cotthope. Good man. He's solid. Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle. I, I don't know how to put it. It's just a question of uh, confidence. Confidence in what I do. Confidence in who I am. We've been making confidence ever since I drove the first cork into Tono Bungay. We mint faith, George. That's what we do. And by Jove, we've got to keep minting it. Coining it, more like. I'm sorry. Well... No. I'm a man of my word, as you know. 
Haven't I always said that little uh, loan of yours back in the Wimblehurst days? Do you uh, mean my trust fund? Ah, uh, I always promised you I'd pay it back fourfold and with interest. So, no, uh, you have my blessing for these researchers of yours. You can rest assured of that. Oh, and uh, money for the labour, the equipment. Thank you, Uncle. <laughs> George, to turn your back on Tono Bungay. Why, next to these flying machines of yours, they're no comparison. Uncle, you, you don't seriously suppose Tono Bungay ever improved the lot of mankind by as much as a hair, do you? There must be something there, or why else would the great British public be flocking all this time to buy it off the shelves just as soon as we restock them, eh? You answer me that. But don't you see? You call it fake. I do. Well, I call it fiction. One huge, courageous fiction. People down there in the real world, they swelter and toil. Great railways grow. Cities rise to the skies and spread wide and far. Mines are opened. Factories hum. Foundries roar. Ships plough the seas. And what for? So the likes of you and me, we can get rich on their backs. But steady on, George, steady on. You'll sound like a socialist. And then go scorching about the countryside in our magnificent motor cars, making ourselves conspicuous and stately in splendid houses, eating and drinking like gods. And what do we give back? Not just you and me, Uncle, so many others of these so-called knights of commerce and, oh, heavens, I don't know, uh, buccaneers of big business. We give them just an illusion. We give the people down there a specious hope of improvement and betterment, which has no more substance, no more solid, lasting reality than a mere bubble, a thin, transparent soap bubble. Full of false promises and empty assurance. George, you've a hard nature. Always have had. Very hard. Well, that's it, Arnold. You and I have earned our weekend. But my, don't it look good? As models go. Arnold, after Christmas, sir, do we start to build the machine itself? Heavens above Christmas. Mr P? Oh, I'd almost forgotten how time flies. <laughs> let's hope not just time, eh, sir? <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's hope so, Arnold. Not just time. In part two of Tono Bungay by H.G. Wells, George was played by Neil Dudgeon, Uncle Teddy by James Lawrenson, Aunt Susan by Diane Bull, and Marion by Jaquetta May. The College Registrar was played by Steve Hodson, Mr. Ramboat by James Taylor, Smithy by Vivian Rochester, Sydney by James Telfer, and Effie by Geraldine Fitzgerald. All other parts were played by the... Oh, and glad as a part, there's only the one, the Lord Roberts. Once upon a time, there was only one bottle of Tono Bungay. And now, look, there's not a corner of this great British <laughs> empire of ours where it don't sell like there's no tomorrow. Huh? Uh, you, you'll be coming over to Lady Grove for the weekend. I will. Oh, can I give you a lift, anyway? Uh, no, I um, uh, thought I'd uh, pop up to town for an hour or so. But it's almost evening. Oh, business, don't you know? Yes, just um, business. Oh, never f-
find it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Help me out of this, will you, Arnold? Uh, oh. Uh, oh. 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 How did he look? Well, I think we're getting there. Oh. But my Dooney still kick. Oh. It's our old problem, Mr. P. Longitudinal stability. So, what do you suggest? Well, I've been thinking. What say we uh. redistribute the load to offset the pitching? How so? Well, look at it this way. Uh. Our main problem is the negative side of them uh. wing curvatures. Uh. Go on. So, go what on. if we widen the carriage uh. and extend the netting right across here to the uh. first centre rod? Right? This way, Lady Osprey. Lady Beatrice. Thank you. <laughs> How nice of you to drop in. Now, my late husband always believed one should pay a visit to new neighbours. Indeed. <laughs> my, my, but how the place has changed. And in so many ways. Uh, you must understand, I knew it in the old days. Before... Mother? Uh, well, before. Well, of course you did. Since your day, I'm sure things have changed a lot, Your Ladyship. Them old knights cavorting about on the off chance of a dragon or two. I beg your pardon? <gasps> Not to mention their ladies in their cone hats and their veils. <laughs> Balmy on the crumpet. Whatever <laughs> can you be? Sit you down, sit you down. I always take tea about now. Some squashed flies, perhaps? Excuse me? Some Garibaldi's. Oh, thank you. The tea's on its way. And here's old George. Lady Osprey, Lady Beatrice, my nephew George. Hey. George! <laughs> Uh, do you two know each other? Beatrice? I'll say. I'm Susan. I have known Beatrice almost as long as I've known myself. Oh. Oh, thank you, Clary. Uh, Lady Osprey, Beatrice, may I do the honours? And this you'll remember. Why, the gallery, <laughs> of course. How very beautiful. George. Oh, yes? Do you forgive me? Forgive you? Be all those years ago. I gave you away pretty completely, didn't I? Well. And afterwards, I gave away Archie, too. <laughs> <laughs> Heavens, what a spanking they gave him. George, mm. you know, when it was all over, I went back there. Back to our wigwam. Out in Westwood? I went there, and I, I cried and cried for all the evil I'd done you. Ah, long ago and far away. But I've often thought of it since. Beatrice, are you following? Oh, here, Mother. Um, I'm here. George. George, I can hardly believe this. However did you get here? Here? All this. Weren't you the son of the housekeeper? You recognised me all the same. B, tell me what you've been doing, or where you live, and... Oh, of course, the house went to the Philbricks, the newspaper people. You knew that. I did hear something about... Them. And now my stepmother and I, we live in the little dower house in the grounds. Beatrice! Yeah. See the upper walkway. So very picturesque. Beatrice. George. Are you there? There are so many things I want to know about you. A hundred things. This flying for a start. What? I don't know where to begin. The idea is simple enough. You combine a modified gas balloon with an engine and rudder controlled by steel rods. Then you. B. Oh, George, I've known such duffers of men. All my men were here already. They couldn't have got here otherwise. But you, you've climbed. <laughs> if you can call it climbing. I I've remembered you ever since. You know, I've used you. How do you mean? As a sort of model, an exemplar. But then somehow, I, I, I don't know, in my stories you were always rather... Difficult. B? In clothes that were ready made. A bit like a Labour MP. <laughs> Is that so bad? No, but... And it turns out you're not a bit like that, really. Uh, and then again, you are. George, the other day I heard some men talking about you. Except then, of course, I didn't realise it was you. Is it true you could run for Parliament? <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's like all those years ago when you asked me if I was to go fight hand-to-hand -hand as a soldier. Well? Flying. Putting together these airships, making them soar. That's my ambition. That's my only passion. And a lot more dangerous than hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Beatrice! <laughs> Beatrice! Oh, dear. Time to go home. So tell me, this soaring, 
Where do you do it? Can I come and watch? <laughs> Susan? But what if it's the matter? Oh, you know me, George. There's always been my gardening and my reading and then my physiology classes at Birkbeck, but... Oh, you come in at the end of it these last few weeks. So... Tell me. Remember when your uncle got my silly old portrait painted by Robert the RA? Yes. Remember that at home in his studio? You came too. There was this novelist. Leastways, she called herself a novelist. Magazine writer, more like. Name of Helen Scrimger. Well, I do vaguely remember. A blonde woman with a lot of diamonds, rather substantial. Plump, I'd say. You don't mean... I do. He's confessed. Infatuated, he was. He says she used to call him God in his chariot. Silly old poor boys. Oh, what? My, is he contrite now. Now she's gone off to South America or wherever, it's all tears and blubbering. Can scarcely look me in the face. And it is all over. Oh, I put my foot down. Told him he wanted smacking. Old passion's one thing, but this, this was just nonsense. I'm not going to let him show off to other women what a silly old lobster he is at his time of life. In abdominal belts, indeed. No. In future, I'm going to mark every scrap of his underclothes with red letters. Ponderevo privates, keep off. <laughs> and you know what got him going. For once, when he goes out and buys a book for himself. Same subject as ever, of course. You don't mean... That's right. A book called Napoleon and the Fair Sex. <laughs> George, you busy? Well, tomorrow we take out the Lord Roberts again. We're planning it for dawn. Do me a favour, will you? He's uptown saying he's too ashamed to face me. Pop up there, just for this evening... And to tell him he can come back, will you? He can come back home. And not another word said. Oh, oh I've been such a duffer. I mean, your Aunt Susan, of course, she's been wonderful about the whole thing, but, well, she don't know the half of it. You mean there have been other women? Oh, no, no, nothing of the kind. It's, well, 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 frankly, it's the business. What about it? Well, I mean, I'll try to keep it from her. What with, well, everything else, no point in her worrying unduly. But this, this, it's hotting up. And with you so busy at your fly-in, I haven't known who I could turn to. What do you mean? Well, you recall Philbrick and his newspaper campaign against me a while ago, hmm? insinuating Tono Bungay was overextended and, and with like a closer look at our figures... Well, I don't understand. Hmm? I thought you and your lawyers threatened libel. Oh, we, we did, and that stopped them in their tracks for a while. And if, as you say, we're sound... Oh, we're sound. Trust me for that. But uh, all the same... Uncle? There's such a lot of... Well... Imagination in these things. Truth be told, we was a bit um, overextended. Uh, first, everyone ignored it. And finally, well, I kept banging on so. And, well, now they're threatening to come into the offices and turn our accounts upside down, checking who's owed what, seeing if monies have gone missing, why this surplus here and that deficit there... And, George, you're the only one who can step in here and sort it out for me. George. When are they due? Eh? Oh, well, why? End of the month, I believe, but... So you can spare me for one more day? One day? <laughs> well, of course. Well, just one day and I'm with you, Uncle. <laughs> whatever you've done, whatever they say... We won't go down without a fight. Oh, God bless you, George. Just to hear you say that with that whoosh of yours. Why? It bucks me up. Now, good man. Here, up you go. Now, you remember, sir... I know. 
Wide circle over Lady Grove, back across here, then out towards Effingham. But the essential is those blooming nets. The first sound of a problem, you shut down the engine, tighten the bag and... and... Arnold? Watch its nose, won't you, sir? For your own sake. Take it, your Mr. P's friend. How long's he been up? Eleven minutes twenty-three. Uh, if you just watch that horse, oh, ma'am. Heavens! He's coming back this way. Ma'am, please control that horse of yours, will you? If it starts to kick up, it'll distract yes, him. I'm not a complete fool. Like a bird, George Bondarivo. You're a bloody genius. <laughs> Steady. Steady. If we can just manage to... He's coming in rather low, isn't he? Mum, I've told you before! Oh, boy. Yeah. I've told you! For God's sake, hold that! Base. I'm trying to, aren't I? Oh, boy. Oh. I think he's made it. Oh, and no thanks to you. Oh, damn. Ow. What's happened to my face? Oh, don't tell me. I died and went to heaven. You're my appointed angel. Oh, George, don't joke. You've really been very ill. In fact, by all the rules of the game, you should... Uh, and nurse? Yes, Mum? Uh, I think you deserve some fresh air. You couldn't just pop down to the gatehouse, could you? See if there's any post... Well, if you wish, Mum. Where am I? You're in my stepmother's house. The Dower House at Bedley Corner. They had other plans for you, they? but... They? Your aunt and uncle. Got hope. Carnaby. But I insisted. Then you are my guardian angel. I'll be... Uh, I had these dreams. Such dreams. Heat. Swamps and mangroves. That was your fever. There are men so hungry for money and power they'll go to the ends of the earth for it through sickness and disease, through jungle and tropical forest, and, and me, I was the worst of them. You were sick, that's all. I dreamed I killed someone. How is it possible, B? Such greed, such appetite to plunder and loot and pillage. Look, you're back and I'm here, beside you. How long have I been away? Well... It was very serious. When I saw you lying there on the ground like that, I, I did think you were dead. You fell out of the Lord Roberts straight into the Farthing Hill beaches. In a way, I suppose that was your salvation. 
But the end of a branch went right through your teeth and gums and out the other side. Oh, well, don't worry, you vain thing. You won't turn into some sort of gargoyle. They say it'll just be a scar. I asked how long. A month. A whole month? B. Hmm? Will you marry me? Stop that, George Ponderevo. You're not fit to marry anyone at present. I want to talk. And I don't want you to talk. In any case, you're not meant to. I know my mind's a bit confused, but... George! I want to touch you. What do you think you're doing? Put your hands down. Down by your side. Lie back. That's right. And I told you, don't talk. Well, will you marry me? How can I answer you now? How can I say anything? Does that mean no? It has to be no. But when we met again, I suddenly I realized... can't marry. I can't and won't. Oh, George. Why did you have to talk? Couldn't you see? But what is it? Is it some circumstances? My social position? Oh, damn your social position. Let's get some air. I do believe I sent Nurse out in the pouring rain. B. You didn't even ask me if I loved you. Then, then if that's all... No, it's not all, for heaven's sake. It's not even a small part of it. Of course I love you. With all my heart. Then why the devil... Do you know this one? If that will make you happy, I'll even marry you too. And since I'm not allowed to kiss you, just listen. Understand, once and for all, I am yours. I am yours just as if we had been married for 50 years. Beatrice, your wife. Is that enough? Now will you rest? But... In that case... Because there are, as you say, circumstances. Because there are complications. When you're recovered, you'll be better able to understand them. But for now, a secret between the two of us. Do you promise me that? Yes, yes, of course, but... Oh, we... if I could only just kiss you now. <laughs> I'm sorry, George. Oh, please. You can't go, not like that. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, my God. Now, we're all hoping this time, sir, you'll take things just a little more gently. I've brought you some tea. And Lady Beatrice? She's gone. Gone? Where? I don't rightly know. Well, she left no message. There's been no post. Uh, both, sir. A note left by Lady Beatrice. And uh, here, uh, give it here. George. Don't try to find me. I could be in London, Paris, Wales, or Northampton. God speed your recovery, my darling. I'll explain everything very soon. Your loving B. Also, this telegram, sir. Oh, I'm sorry? They just brought it up from the gatehouse. Oh, right. Give it here. George, delighted to hear you're better. Come quick. Even double quick. Bad things brewing. Yours. Uncle Teddy. Nurse, would you say I'm fit to be up? Well, sir, I don't know. No. Do you I... think you could find my clothes? Uh, double quick. George. Oh, my God, it's good to have you back. You've already read the newspapers, of course. I have, on the train. Oh, it's bad, George. And it'll get worse. When's the adjudication? Tomorrow morning. But it's not just the bankruptcy. Then what? Well... It's all tied up in a skein. You've been away so long, and everything's got so complicated. At first, well, I, just a loan, like here and there, I, I shifted some monies over from the Tono Bungay Pension Fund, just uh, temporary, like. Oh and my God! So, when it it came to this last audit, well. I had to think fast. And... So the figures were wrong? Well, I, I wouldn't call them uh, wrong, exactly. 
Just strained, George. They're talking fraud. So, Uncle, what can I do? Oh, frankly, well, the more I think about it, George, the more I realise it's better for me and for everyone if you well, stay out of things a bit. Yes, Napoleon at Moscow. Comes a time there's certain corners you've got to turn alone. And Aunt Susan? Yeah. She'd like to be in the battle with me here in London, but... Uh, ah, I'll tell you what. You might go down to Lady Grove and keep her company, hmm? but mm. I'll be down myself as soon as I can get away. <laughs> well, thank God for the weekends, eh? My, my, better than ever. So now we call it... Why well, change the name? I call it Lord Roberts Peter. <laughs> Good for you. You've seen the papers, Arnold, about the adjudication? I have. Tell me, was there ever a country so puffed you up only to shoot you down again? Mm. And uh, your uncle, Mr P, he's bearing up. One thing's for sure. There'll be no more money for this kind of thing. Sir? All we had was in the game. Imagine. The work we put in on it, how can it be allowed? Arnold, I'm thinking. Before they catch up, before they know what's what, I'd like to try it just once more. <laughs> try what? Lord Roberts? Soaring? One last time? Can we do it? Can we do it, he says. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Believe me, we can do it all right. Are you serious? Never more so, Aunt. At least till things have calmed down. But is it safe? It's safer, I'd say, than staying here and seeing poor Uncle Teddy pilloried by the newspapers each day oh. and then, well, who knows, dragged screaming to the law courts for fraud. Oh, I can't stop thinking about it. Poor Teddy and that adjudication. Won't they be deciding by now? Mm. Have some more soup, George, while there still is some. Why not? Uncle! Oh, it's all up, George! What, adjudicated? Well, no, no, not yet, but... Oh, it's cruel, George. They ask me questions, they kept asking me questions. <coughs> Bloody bullies. It isn't fair play. A barrister chap with a ride. He don't ask a civil question, he, he bellows. And this is a man I've sat next to at dinner's wife. Whitaker right. I've given city tips to her. I've helped him. <coughs> well, when they broke for lunch meal, oh, I couldn't swallow a mouthful. My stomach's all wrong. Has been for weeks because of this. And, you know me. I've got the coals and this one's on my chest. So... <coughs> Teddy! <sighs> Oh, I, I couldn't face it, Susan. I, 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 I said I'd get a bit of air and slipped out down to the embankment. Are you saying you bolted? Oh, Teddy, my poor love. <laughs> and then, well, I, I came on down here. As for their mothers, still up in London, no doubt, doing what they like with me. They were, they were springing things on me, things I didn't expect. They rushed me. I'd rather be a three-card sharper than a barrister. I'd rather sell cats me in the streets. <coughs> Sit you down, Teddy. There. Under the collar. Oh. The uh, abscondings, not too bad. Uh, bad for the look of things, of course, but, well, they'll just uh, call you up again for the rest of the examination, Uncle. That's all. Just... Just uh, to be baited and bullied and, and, and bellowed at all over again. Uh, besides, that ain't all. How do you mean? Uh, under the strain of it, it, it gets so you can't remember what you said. And you're bound to contradict yourself. And uh, <coughs> I've done things. Uh, and it's, it's, it's bound to come out. Well, apparently has come out already. What things? Well, you know, 
<laughs> writing things down, um, uh, signatures when people wasn't around. See, uh, well, I was in such a hole. Oh, my God. Oh, that's, that's right. Oh, George. Susan. It's forgery. Poor old Teddy. Poor old porpoise. Look at him. He's fallen asleep. Not surprised what he's been through. That settles it. I've made up my mind. The Lord Roberts. Oh, George, I don't know. I don't... Can we think of anything better? At least until things blow over. You will take care, won't you? You promise? I promise. And we go tonight. All set, Mr. P. Oh. And uh, your uncle. Oh, we'll manage somehow. No, yeah. Napoleon was just the same all through war. Give me a hand to get him in, will you? Uh, yeah, right, you are. Uh, yeah, we go. Still, there was always one last chance for, for old Barney. Yep, yeah, yeah. if you just. The light uh, thing, wasn't there? There's it? only one thing for it, sir. You take the left arm and I take. Uh, 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 gotcha. Uh, uh, Hold tight, uncle, and. Yeah. Oh. Uncle? Gosh, are you all right? Yeah, Leipzig. That was it. And remember, Mr. P, the difficult uh, bit, that's the uh, added weight. Don't I know it? So the moment you're clear uh, and in, that's when you let uh, slip the trolley. The rail will hold it. Right. I think I got that. Anything else? Nothing else. Except, well, good luck, sir. Exercise and leisure. Oh my, what leisure. And with such leisure, with such space, a blank opportunity, it seems a sin not to fill. One gets bored, bored beyond redemption, bored to be always repeating the same vain pattern. Then Carnaby came along, and whatever you've heard about him, he isn't like those other men. They just go about having sex. Everybody's uh, having sex. Me too, and not by halves. Carnaby was different. So, me, Carnaby, you knew. Well, these last days I've had a lot of time to draw conclusions. I suppose once this would have mattered immensely. Now... Nothing matters. Though I felt I should have told you. I wanted you to understand why I didn't marry you there and then when you first said... George Ponderivo. George the servant's boy. I have loved you, George Ponderivo, with all my heart and with all my soul since that first day I kissed you in the bracken. Only, will you believe this? I forgot. George, how is this possible? I forgot. So just forget again everything until now. Marry me. No. Marry me, marry me, marry me. We, we have had this time... And my, what a fine time it's been, has it not? And, and such as I've had to give, a poor gift perhaps. It's been my all, packed in without reserve. You've had the best of me, but now we are at the end of it and it's over. Why? Marry me! Oh, you think I, 
poor, spoilt, selfish little Beatrice could take courage and come to you and be your everyday wife while you work, and a poor... George! Tell me why not. I fell in love with you from the first. Do not doubt it. But when you seemed a successful man, I, I told myself I wouldn't marry you. Although I was lovesick for you. Although, for all you were stupid and trying to impress me... Be. I did come so very near it. But I knew I wasn't good enough. I don't understand. I, too, have my reputation, my bad habits and bad associations. Just ask around. And now you're poor. What of it? If I wasn't good enough to be a rich man's wife, I'm certainly not good enough to be the wife of a poor one. I can't even do my own hair. Well, do you think I'd care about all that if you were my wife? Don't you see? Don't you see what I am? I'm a woman spoiled and ruined. Yes. And you are a ruined man. I could become prosperous again. In no time, we start clean from the bottom. Do you expect me to be any sort of helper to you? Any sort of wife? Any sort of mother to your children? People can be ruined by wealth just as much as by poverty. I should be down and dragging in the first half mile. And it's because I love you. I won't take you down with me all over again. You'll go back to Carnaby? Yes. And never the twain shall meet. What? Something my mother used to say. There's upstairs and downstairs and never the twain shall meet. Oh, George, we've met. Oh, indeed we have. You've been mine. Heaven and hell can't alter that. And now? And now, finally, my light goes out. Call it General Anesthetic. They wouldn't have me, Captain. Sir. Now, I built this destroyer to my own design. Saw it through from first blueprint to last bolt. And then we offered it to our splendid English government. And would they have me? Well, you know my name. You know the scandal. I read the papers, sir. It seemed to me that in the end they were rather taken by you. Oh, don't the English always admire a buccaneer? <laughs> Someone who sails uh, close to the wind. Well... Sailing we are, sir. As for a wind... Look at it this way, sir. This country that's bought us. Yes, Captain. Yesterday, England. Tomorrow, the South Atlantic. We're all things that make and pass. Indeed we are, Captain. Indeed we are. 